Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about cloudy water. And specifically how to fix it in your aquarium. Before this video starts, I really want everyone to calm down. Cloudy water is normally not a big issue. And normally the only issue with it is aesthetics. Most of the time, it's just an indicator for other issues in your aquarium. It's not going to be lethal to your fish unless you leave this go for too long or there's a major, major issue in your aquarium, which is very unlikely. Now in today's video, I'm going to give you guys some reasons why we have cloudy water. And then I'm also going to give you guys some solutions on how to fix this. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. I'm going to play a bunch of B-roll from my aquariums and my fish room and just explain to you some of the reasons why I've had cloudy water in the past and what I've done to fix this. For all you guys who don't know, I do have quite an extensive fish room where I do a lot of breeding. And in this room, I constantly deal with this issue. So I do have quite a lot of experience with cloudy water. So I guess we should start the video off by talking about why we have the cloudy water and then I'll give you guys the solution. So there are four main reasons why we'll have cloudy water in an aquarium from my experience. The first reason is bacterial blooms. The second is dirty substrates. The third is feeding. And the fourth is too many fish and an inadequate filtration system to take care of these fish. So I guess we'll start off by talking about bacterial blooms as they're the most common reason why we have cloudy water. Now when we have an aquarium, it's important to note that we're trying to build an ecosystem within a glass box. A lot of beginners don't realize this, and I was probably one of those beginners. What they think an aquarium is, is all about the equipment and having a big filter and fish and the filter takes care of the fish, etc. This is definitely not true because a lot of people can have aquariums without filtration by just using some plants. Inside the aquarium, there's a really complex cycle of minerals and exchanges between oxygen and CO2. Just There's constantly stuff going on within your aquarium, but this can be broken down into a really easy digestible system that we call the nitrogen cycle. A really quick summary of this cycle is fish produce waste. That waste is then converted by bacteria into ammonia. The ammonia is then converted by other bacteria into nitrite, and then more bacteria turn it into nitrates. And then another bacteria denitrifies it and the cycle repeats itself. Now it's really important that we have this cycle going on in the aquarium as this is a big part of the ecosystem. If we're missing any part of this cycle, we'll have a buildup of nitrates, nitrites, or in our worst case, ammonia. Ammonia is very, very common for starting aquariums as this is the first stage after fish produce waste and without those bacteria that break down the ammonia into nitrites, we'll have a buildup of ammonia which is highly toxic to fish and burns their gills. So the reason I say the bacterial bloom is the most common reason is because most of the time when we have cloudy water is when we initially set up our aquariums. If you have cloudy water in your aquarium months after you've set up the tank, this might be an issue and we'll talk about this a bit later. So the reason we get bacterial blooms when we first set up our aquarium, in my opinion, is due to the fact that we add fish straight away. The fish produce waste and then bacteria can bloom by using the minerals within that waste. This is because we don't have those bacteria that are part of the nitrogen cycle. So what we have happen is bacteria is reproducing and reproducing until we can visibly see them in the aquarium and it creates a milky mixture that looks very cloudy and unappealing. There is two main types of bacteria in our aquariums. There's heterotrophic and autotrophic. Heterotrophic are the cloud causing bacteria in the tank and autotrophic are the bacteria that help break down things in the tank. This might sound a little bit complicated and you don't really need to memorize this, but the reason I'm explaining this is so that you understand what happens in the future. Basically, heterotrophic, cloud-causing bacteria feed on fish waste and produce ammonia. An easy way to understand this is they're feeding on organic material. On the other hand, autotrophic bacteria feed on non-organic materials like ammonia and nitrites and nitrates. These are the ones we really want in our aquarium. So at the start of the tank setup, we have an imbalance of these bacteria and we have a lot of heterotrophic bacteria being able to produce because of the new waste and not a lot of autotrophic bacteria because there's no ammonia, and nitrites and nitrates. So if this is what's happened to you and you have lots of those cloud causing bacteria in your tank, don't worry, this is completely normal. And this is why a lot of people talk about cycling in aquarium. Cycling in aquarium is all about trying to build up these autotrophic bacteria that help keep the water clean with that nitrogen cycle. The way people do this is normally by leaving the aquarium with some rotting food in there to produce some waste. And you just start off a mini cycle in that tank before the fish are added. Now, if you've set up a tank and you've already got fish in it and you haven't waited, I still wouldn't worry. As long as you haven't added like a million different types of fish, there still is a few things you can do to help get rid of this cloudy water and make sure the fish are okay. There's two main schools of thought which kind of contradict themselves and I'm gonna explain them. The first thing a lot of people do is do nothing. 
because they believe if you start changing water that you're just going to add minerals to the water to help build up those cloud causing bacterias and continue to help them blossom. By doing nothing you give the bacterias a chance to balance and eventually the water will just clear within a few days. I found this to be true in some cases but in my opinion the best thing to do in this scenario is to do water changes. I do about a 20% water change once a day until the issue goes away as what this will help do is take out a lot of that fish waste that's helping build up those cloud causing bacterias. As long as you're not cleaning your filter material, you're not going to be able to take those autotrophic bacterias out of the tank. So by removing as much fish waste as possible, this should alleviate the issue. A lot of other fish keepers here might disagree with me as they think by adding new water to the tank, you're adding new minerals for those cloud causing bacterias to reproduce. And like I just said, I don't believe this to be true as you're not adding more waste to the tank, you're simply just adding fresh water which would only contain some kinds of calcium and things in the water, which aren't fish waste, which are actually causing the issue. So that's just my opinion, and that's how I deal with bacterial blooms. By simply changing the water about 20% a day until the issue goes away, I wouldn't do more than that because you might stress out your new fish, but that's a really good solution and has worked well for me in the past. Now the other issues in your tank are very, very easy to fix. The second reason why we might have cloudy water in our tank is due to a dirty substrate. A lot of people don't know this as well, but when they buy substrate in an aquarium, like gravel or sand, they simply just take it from the packet and add it to the tank. A lot of these people should have done their research before getting an aquarium, but this is quite a common issue surprisingly. When we have any type of substrate in the aquarium hobby, the gravel and sand will commonly have a ton of dust on it from wherever it was collected or the factory it was in. It's really important that when we get a new substrate and we set up a new tank that we thoroughly wash this substrate out. The way you do this is just get a bucket add a bit of substrate to it and just wash it with some water until it goes clear. If you don't do this, you can easily add a ton of debris into the tank. Now the debris is not going to kill the fish, but it's just really unappealing and it can take quite a long time for it to go away. And the easiest way to get rid of this issue is to firstly wash your substrate, but secondly, you can just do water changes and add some extra filtration to help get rid of the particles in the water column. I wouldn't recommend adding extra filtration because it's only going to be a temporary issue. I would just continue doing water changes until the issue went away. The third reason kind of ties into the first reason, and this is feeding. When we overfeed our tank and there's excess food on the floor, we're just creating fuel to help feed those cloud causing bacteria that I was talking about earlier. Overfeeding can be a really common issue at the start of a tank, and that extra food is just going to help contribute to the issue of those bacterial blooms. That rotting food is also going to cause a ton of ammonia and can easily kill your fish if you're not careful. So it's always important to start off by underfeeding and then slowly build up the feedings in your tank. Make sure your fish can eat all the food that you're adding to the tank within 30 seconds of adding it. Anything extra should be taken out for the first month. And finally, the fourth reason also contributes to the first reason. That might sound a bit confusing. But the fourth reason is adding too many fish. If you have too many fish in a tank, they're going to produce a ton of waste, which is also going to create fuel for those cloud causing bacterias. So for the same reasons as overfeeding, we don't want to add too many fish to a tank, especially at the start of the tank because we just don't have enough bacteria to help deal with these fish and the waste that's being produced. If you have too many fish in a tank, the best thing to do is add additional filtration as our beneficial bacteria live in the filtration and within the substrate of the tank. So by adding extra filtration, you're gonna help deal with that bio load of the new fish. Now with all those reasons in mind, like I've talked about before, there are a few things that I do recommend as well if you do wanna get rid of this cloudy water issue. The first thing is water changes, they're very beneficial 20% a day until the issue goes away. That's a really good rule and it's worked for me in the past. The second thing is adding live plants to a tank. Live plants really help with the nitrogen cycle and will help balance out a tank and help get rid of a lot of those nasties that come in the water. Live plants will use those nasty chemicals to grow and provide a really beautiful display as well as helping balance out the tank. And the third thing, something that I don't really recommend and believe in that much is adding additional filtration. You can definitely add a fine filter media that's going to help catch a lot of those particles out of the tank, but this won't help a lot of people as most of the time they'll mistake bacterial blooms for being particles in the water. Adding filtration will help with the bacterial bloom, but in my opinion, a tank should almost be able to run without a filter. You should have enough live plants in that tank or it should be stocked appropriately and you shouldn't have these issues. So you can add extra filtration, but I think the best thing to do is just make sure you're appropriately stocking a tank you have at least a sponge filter in that tank and you're not adding too many fish or overfeeding and you shouldn't have these issues. So I guess the taking points away from this video is the 20% a day and the issue goes away rule. 
that's probably the most important thing to take away. And hopefully now you guys have a little bit of an understanding of why we have cloudy water in a tank. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.